crypto and its role in the sports industry in Africa. Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Frank Bea, as uh, she said, I'm the director of Africa for Bitcoin, which is a crypto sports book and online gaming platform. I'm just going to request my fellow panelists to introduce themselves. Hi, uh, my name is Luca. Um, I'm a co-founder at Metaverse Architects. Uh, essentially, we're a 3D modeling and game development studio that focuses on um, building inside the Metaverse. Um, the main platform we work with is the Central. Okay, and uh, we've been joined live. Hechuku, if you can hear us. Yeah, sure, I can hear. Okay, yeah, um, thank you, everyone. Um, Ikechuku Koye, I'm chairman of Anambra State Esports Association. So, uh, Anambra State is one of the 36 states in Nigeria, and uh, so we are a sub-regional esports association. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let me start with you, Luca. Um, what do you think are some of the use cases that crypto has in the world of sports? Because I think... Um, when, for example, I personally started my crypto journey about six years ago, uh, sports was the last thing I ever thought would be influenced or would have a part to play. Yeah, so, I mean, crypto has a lot of uses, I think, in sport. Um, the main one that, that I look at and that, that I'll talk about from my perspective um, uh, links again with the metaverse. Uh, the central land is an open source Web3 metaverse, so that means... Uh, it's entirely on the blockchain. Um, what I've seen in the past year is a number of opportunities over there, um, both with being able to watch live games instead of watching them like alone, being able to watch them online but together with a crowd. Um, as we know, crypto, um, there's also other developments inside of the space such as NFTs. Um, and we know that football clubs and, and, uh, pl and football players uh, they do rely on a lot of revenue from merchandise and uh, NFT wearables, so different merchandise you could wear um, that represents your sports team is definitely quite a big opportunity inside of the metaverse. Okay, now uh, back home, Ikechuku, do you have or uh, can you share any examples of real world use cases that you've seen uh, happening in the continent? Maybe uh, they could be live or in testing phase. Luca just said it all, you know, but uh, let me just add it. So he said metaverse, and, and that's the next thing, you know, the convergence of uh, sports and, and, you know, and uh, and crypto. So we're, we're all heading to the metaverse, and that's where it's going to be. So when you talk about uh, crypto and and sports, you said that, you know, uh, like you mentioned, people wasn't sure if what the use case would be in, in sports, but we've seen uh, crypto actually creeping into our sports because you know it's about decentralized you know financing and, and uh, people actually want to make a fortune from their from their passion which is sports and you know Africans we are passionate about sports and, and also we found a way to make uh, make uh, you know make money off it and crypto is a very good platform for that because of its nature it's decentralized you know it's you know, it, it can easily go beyond the, you know, jurisdictions. You can make transactions without having to go through, you know, the necessary regulatory. You can actually, in crypto, you beat the, you know, the various regulatory issues, you know, uh, from the central banks and the monetary authorities. You know, you know, Africa, we are a 54 country, so, so you can imagine what it means for a crypto. You can actually do transactions seamlessly across across countries and borders, and that's been happening in crypto. So we, uh, the next stage, I think, will be in tokenization. For example, I, I've got someone telling me about uh, he, he wants to acquire a sports club and he wants to tokenize it so that fans can actually buy into it and, and become owners. So, it's, you know, NFTs and the tokens and, you know, that's, I think, will be the next stage for crypto in sports in Africa. And that makes it, to make it easy, yeah, because now you don't have to own bits of a, a sport club instead of buying the whole of it. So, and if you look at the purchasing power of Africa, you will see that crypto is actually crypto and tokenization, the NFT that actually would you know work for Africa. Thank you. 
um, I think it's, it's good that both of you have mentioned the same, the same word. Um, and this same thing is actually the same, first item that uh, um, launched this particular summit, the metaverse. It's been a very confusing term for a lot of people, I'm very sure. Luca, how would you describe in a very simple way what the metaverse is? So, I mean, the metaverse is the next involvement of the internet, a lot of people will say. Um, what it's like today is essentially a, a video game, but not one that's focused on uh, leveling up and, and achieving, you know, uh, and completing a storyline, but rather having a, an open space where creators can um, use, th use their mind and uh, innovate by creating new products that are not uh, on the market yet. Um, like what? Um, so maybe you're familiar with Fortnite. Um, and in Fortnite, it's very popular to have different uh, dances or different expressions that you can do with your character. Um, and this is just one way that gamers are able to kind of express how they feel or think or their emotion in that point in time uh, without having to use words online uh, in a 3D space. Um, one thing that we did during the World Cup at Metaverse Architects was um, we looked into football celebrations. We all know that when a footballer scores a goal, he's going to go and do his trademark celebration. The interesting thing is that uh, we found out that none of these football celebrations are actually trademarked. Um, these football celebrations um, are nobody's intellectual property. So when Messi does his very famous celebration or Ronaldo does his very famous celebration, there is no intellectual property that's owned by the player or that's owned by the club. So what we did was that we used um, that, that concept um, to capture a footballer's um, uh, kind of celebration. We then took that data and connected it to avatars inside of the central land, and we minted a footballer's celebration as an NFT. So now you could actually go and buy a footballer's celebration as an NFT. It's a new kind of product. Um, uh, and I think that's just one way that the metaverse could uh, influence the way that um, uh, we distribute or um, uh, we kind of think about um, different ways to kind of create new ideas that could be implemented for football, for sports in the metaverse. Uh, and of course, including crypto. Yeah, that actually reminds me of the NBA Top Shot, uh, which was the very first NFT that was minted to popularize. Um, oh, basically to just capture that moment memorabilia, right, um, for, for, for the fans, right? Um, now, the NFT market particularly, not the concept, the market particularly, um, came in with a storm, a very big storm, and everyone was promising all these use cases, and for example, uh, you know, capturing those special moments for football fans. Um, do you think, for example, the fall of the cr or the crash of the prices of value of NFTs is something that is going to uh, affect the concept going forward. Um, if I could just jump in and answer that, I, no, I don't. Uh, in, in December of 2021, uh, the NFT market was through the roof. It was going crazy. And everybody thought that NFTs were for rich people and they're very expensive. So in December, I decided to create a Christmas card as an NFT, minted it on Polygon, and I shared it with, uh, with 100 of my friends. And the reaction of my friends was like, wait, so you don't actually need to pay to own an NFT? You could receive it for free? And I think that's where we're moving with the NFT market at the moment is that, yes, it could be a speculative asset, something that maybe you buy and the price goes up. But I think in many cases, brands are using NFTs just like, um, uh, you know, the tag we wear for the conference, just to show that you're actually, you know, bought a ticket to the conference and this is your way into the venue. Um, or it could be a way that, you know, give, instead of giving people a keychain, you're giving them an NFT that they could possibly wear inside of the metaverse. So I think we are changing how we think about NFTs um, as no longer just like something that you could potentially make money from, but also just, just like any other tool that technology uh, can provide. Um, a website could be you know, an e-commerce website, but it could also be a place that you get information. So I think it just depends on how we want to use NFTs and what purpose we want to apply them to. Right. Um, Okechuku, you mentioned a very interesting concept, uh, the fun token, uh, which essentially would be uh, sort of minted by 
a league or a football. Maybe a, uh, I'd say a, 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 a sports team, essentially. Uh, what is the importance or the significance of, of owning a, a fan token, for example? Actually, you know, you know what you know what it means to be a fan. You know, we are actually crazy fans in Africa. You, know, you can imagine being in Africa, being a fan of the, of Man U. That's how crazy people are. So it actually means a lot for you know for us. We are emotionally, you know, fan, fans are actually emotionally attached to their clubs, and uh, it's it actually means so much for them to own to own the token, and they are willing to you know see as a, as an investment and and also as an asset. So it, it, it means uh, really, really a lot for a fan to own it and be, you know, there's this connection between owning the token. You know, it's more like an investment. Let me put it that way. So uh, you, you, it makes you a stakeholder, kind of. You see yourself as a stakeholder in the club and, you know, being able to, you know, contribute in making decisions and probably elections as per, you know, the coaches, um, the players the teams and, 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 and all that, you know, being connected to the club, you know, generally, just to be something, I, I think, will be a, a, a no-brainer in the coming future. Great. Um, Luca, we have seen significant involvement of, of uh, you know, foreign sports teams here in crypto, you know. Uh, you know, we've had uh, crypto companies uh, buying naming rights to stadiums. We've had... Uh, famous footballers or famous sports people accepting payment in crypto or Bitcoin. Um, we've seen them being involved in a couple of ways. Um, and most of these uh, activities, as I, as I just mentioned, are happening outside of Africa. What do you think needs to be done in the continent for us to kind of play catch up and also take advantage of these initiatives so that we can push teams, our players, um, our supporters to embrace crypto? So I'm not an expert on, on how that could be done, uh, but the only thing that, that's, uh, that's really caught my eye recently, is, that's coming to Kenya soon, is, is the Starlink satellites uh, that we're going to be providing internet to the region um, uh, through to the sky. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, that, that, that potentially has, um, you know, going to, is going to have a big impact on, on people's accessibility to, to the internet and I do strongly believe that um, the internet is a place where um, it doesn't matter where you're from it's uh, if you've got the skills to make it um, uh, you can make it and um, I really want to see more of that that equal access to um, to the internet coming uh, coming as soon as possible for the region um, uh, I, the, the hardest part is, is building infrastructure but uh, being able to stream internet uh, from satellites to the ground has the potential to be very groundbreaking. Right, thank you. Um, so, uh, so far, any questions from the audience, please? All right. Um, none? Good. Um, so, okay, Chuku, I'd like you to maybe make your final statements on this particular topic and how you feel we should be able to progress going forward. Thank you. I, I think uh, crypto is actually uh, very well received and accepted in, in, across Africa. Africa, the adoption rate is very high, so, so I think it's going well. In a couple of years, we should, you know, get there. But like uh, Luca mentioned, the problem of infrastructure is very important. The cost of internet access and, um, and probably government, you know, regulation. Of course, you know the issues we've had across Africa in terms of the, you know, regulating. Crypto, so uh, although it's getting better, so I think government needs to uh, be more friendly towards crypto, and and, uh, and also the, you know the crypto companies are also doing their I believe doing their bit in, in education, you know trying to help people scale through. Of course, you, you heard what happened with FTX and how it has dampened the enthusiasm. So I think the crypto companies need to do more more of education. You know, in the various aspects of crypto and the speculation is just one bit of it, you know. Um, so yeah, I think uh, yeah, uh, you know, internet access, education, and uh, hopefully the people will take it up from there. 
right, maybe one last thing from you, Luca. What do you have to say? Um, well, it's been amazing in Nairobi, that's for sure. <laughs> my first time here, and uh, I've been having a blast. I don't think it's going to be my last. So i um, uh, looking forward to meeting more people and hopefully connecting with some like-minded people. Yes. You were talking about the um, the goal celebrations. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo, we were I was talking about this yesterday, CR7, one of his NFTs is his goal celebration. Um, so is that his way of claiming it? And would that come, you know, would that, would that overlap with your right? The fact that it, it's, got, it's got utility with it, but so but the token itself or the, the image itself is him doing that thing in the corner. Well, I hope I'm not wrong, because I get into a, a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, but uh, how, how, how we approached it was, um, uh, the advice that, that we received was that the celebration itself is not um, something that, that can be protected under IP, so there's yeah. no legal precedence for that. Uh, but when we actually minted the, uh, the NFT, we didn't call it CR7 or, or Ronaldo or anything like that. We simply named it the GOAT1, or Messi, you might not agree, but and the goat. Okay, two I do. For, I do personally, yes. <laughs> and the goat too for Ronaldo. So um, essentially, we just captured uh, an actor imitating yeah. what they do on a celebration. Yeah. No, I just and thought it was very interesting because yeah. that that only came out last week. His his uh, you know his his um, his package has only came out last week on Binance. The unique so. thing that we did is that um, uh, the celebration is connected to a decentralized avatar. So if you're logged into the central land and you own this NFT, you can hit a button and, make and everybody will see you celebrating like uh, Messi or another. Yeah, that's really good. I love it. All right. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please a uh, round of applause. Bye. 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 Bye.